In this video, I want to go over some new Ghosty shaders that have been released since my last video. Notice the left-hand side. That is Ghosty. If you look at the colors, they look brighter. They look more like a neon type of thing. You can see that here in the characters. And notice on the right-hand side here, I have Kitty and its colors look normal. Notice also on the left that you're going to see the Tmax bar, that it looks a little bit brighter. This is a shader in Ghosty. So here on the screen, you can compare both of them. Ghosty here on the left-hand side. And when I switch here to the right, you're going to notice that the icon changes here. That means that I'm in Kitty. So you can see the colors here on the right hand side. What you see here on the right is just Neovim running inside Kitty. And I use this as my sticky notes app. Notice that I can mark tasks as done here. When I mark them, they are moved to this completed section. So if you want to learn more, I have a video regarding this released it five days ago. It's this Skitty Notes. I explain how I set up everything in detail there. So let me quickly go over these new shader files that have been released. I'm just going to open Neovim. Just going to restore my session here. This is the one that we're looking at right now on the screen that makes it look more bloomy or more neony, right? So this is the setting in one. And the way that I normally use it is this 025 setting because one is a little bit too much for me. I'm going to restart Ghosty. I created a better touch tool action for that because I'm going to be restarting it a lot. So if I press Hyper UG, you're going to notice that it restarts it. And you're going to notice that the shader applied is softer. You can see it here in my Tmux bar at the very top. Notice that the green is not that neony and the characters as well. Don't look as bright. So that's the first shader that we went over, the bloom one. The default value for this shader is not that 025, but it's this one. You're going to notice that this is way more pronounced. So if you want to use the default one, it's fine. But to me, it doesn't seem too practical. That's why I created the other files that you see here. And this is the one that I like using, but it's just a matter of taste. I'm going to start from the top. There are a few files that I haven't tried. I just added them today. So we're going to try them together in the video. Let me come in this. I don't want to have any shaders applied. As you notice here, there's none of them applied. Let's go to this animated gradient shader GLSL. Just uncomment this line, then I restart Ghosty, and we should have the shader applied. Notice that this is animated. All right, let's move to the next one. I'm just going to comment this, and I'm going to uncomment this line. Again, I'm going to restart Ghosty. I haven't tried this one, so I'm not sure what it is. Oh, this looks quite nice. Looks like a CRT monitor. There's another version. We're going to look at it in a few minutes. Notice here is this other one, CRT. We're going to compare both of them. So this one looks actually like a CRT monitor. Notice that you can see how it's curved here on the corners. If you're young, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about. But if you're my age, you're definitely going to get this nice. I do like this. You can combine them, right? So let's say that, for example, I want to keep this better CRT shader. And I also want to keep this bloom one. I'm going to restart Ghosty and both of them are applied. So you don't have to keep one, you can combine them. All right, so let's move on to the next one then. Just going to comment these. We already looked at the bloom variations. So let's just go to the CRT, which is the older version or the first version of the better CRT. So I'm just going to uncomment this. Then I'm going to restart Ghosty. And you're going to notice that this is the old version. It's not that readable. I like the new version better, but there's some people that may like this. In case that you're wondering how I restart Ghosty with the key map, let me bring up Better Touch Tool. And you're going to notice that I have here this Restart Ghosty shortcut. If I open this, you're going to notice that three actions are executed. Just quit the Ghosty app and then launch it basically. And then what I do is that I call this Better Touch Tool action from Carabiner Elements. If you want to learn how I do this in detail, I have this video, Carabiner Elements Configuration Updates 2024. Okay, so I'm just going to mark this task as done because I had a reminder here. Just press Alt X. So let's move on to the next one then. I'm just going to comment and uncomment this one. I'm going to restart Ghosty. Notice that there are some cues that are shown on the screen. You may not see them that well because my terminal is transparent. But if I scroll to this other terminal, the animation stops. Okay. But yeah, notice the cues. You can see them here. You can modify each one of these files. I'll let you know how to do that in a minute. Let's comment this one then. The next one on the list is this dither. 
however you pronounce that. I'm just going to restart Ghosty. And uh, looks cool. Doesn't look bad. I don't understand its purpose. Maybe if you combine it with this better CRT one and we just restart here, it looks like a really old CRT monitor or something. I don't know. But just so you know that this is an option too. I'm just going to undo these changes. Let's move on to the next one, Drunk Guard. Just going to uncomment this and I'm going to restart Ghosty. And uh, you're gonna notice that it looks quite nice, to be honest. I don't think it's that useful, but the effect, I gotta be honest, looks quite good. I can scroll here. Your terminal is probably going to suffer a little bit. You're gonna feel it a little bit slower. Uh, let's see if I just scroll. It's not that bad. I don't feel the performance hit too much. Let's move on to the next one then, this fireworks rockets. I'm just going to uncomment this, restart Ghosty again, and uh, oh, we see some rockets in the background, some animations. Then we have this fireworks.glsl, just gonna restart here. Let's see what this is about. Then we have this other one, Gears and Belt, at the LSL. Let's restart Ghosty again. Right, so it's an animation that happens there. Let's move on to the next one then, Glitchy.GLSL. Let's restart here. Let's see what this is. Oh, it looked nice when it started, like a video game or something. I mean, the work put by the community to create these things is just amazing. Yeah, it looks like it says glitchy. Let's move on to the next one. Glow RGB split twitchy. So it seems that this is a combination of different shaders. All right, so moving on to the next one, Gradient Background. And this is similar to the one that we have here, Animated Gradient Shader, but it's just that this is static, this one. So not much to see here. Let's move on to the next one then. Going to restart here again. Notice that this gives you a matrix effect. Symbols look quite nice. Let's see if we feel the performance hit. Yep, feels lower because of this shader. So you're gonna feel the performance. Let's move on to the next one then, just snow. Like the word says, it's just snow, that's it. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Matrix hallway. I don't know what this is. I haven't tried this one. Just gonna restart Ghosty here. Oh, that looks quite nice. I'm not sure if you will be able to see it on the screen, but it looks like a hallway. Notice that we have the four walls. We have here the bottom right on the top and here on the left, you see some characters. The font color changed as well, as you can see here, and it does not affect the performance. I do see some people using this one, maybe. So let's move on to the next one. Negative is going to restart here. Oh, okay. So like the word says, inverts the colors then. Move to another file so you can see the difference. Let's see if we go to this file, what happens? Yeah, even the pictures or the images in any of them are negative. So I guess this will come handy more like an accessibility feature. People that do need to use this will find it useful. All right, so let's go back to the other file. Let's comment this. Let's try the other one, Retro Terminal. I haven't tried this. I don't know what it does. Okay, so it looks like a CRT monitor, the same effect, but it also changed the colors. Notice that my cursor also changed the color as well. Let's go back to my other file and let's see what happens here. Yep, it changed the colors basically everywhere, including the image. So it looks nice. The effect looks quite nice, to be honest. I wouldn't use it, but 
some people will like it. Let's move on to the next one then. Smoke and Ghost. Let's see here. I don't understand what this does. It looks just like a bloom shader to me. Um, I'm not sure. Let me switch to another file. Maybe I see a difference there. Nope, I don't see any difference. I just look at like um, bloom shader. I may be missing something. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you see on this one. So let's comment this and let's uncomment the file below. I'm just going to restart Ghosty here. Sparks from fire. All right. Let's move on to the other Tmux session where my file is. It changes the colors as well. Let's go back to the main file. I don't see any sparks. I don't see any fire. So I'm not sure if this is working correctly or not. But this is what I see. I'm not sure what you guys will see. Let me know down in the comments. gonna comment this and I'm going to uncomment this one below here and let's restart ghosty spotlight.glsl Okay, so let's move on to the next one, starfieldcolors.glsl. Let's restart Ghostly here. I had tried this in the past in my previous video. It's a bit distracting. Some people may like it, I think. Not quite sure about that. But it definitely will bring attention to your terminal. All right, so let's move on then. Start field. I think this is quite similar. It's just that it doesn't have colors. Yep, I think they're basically the same. It's just that one has colors and the other one does not. Okay, so let's comment this. Now let's uncomment this TFT. I have no idea what this is. Okay, so the pixels look on the screen. So I guess you can combine it with a better CRT effect. I'm not sure if you can notice it on the screen, but it looks like you can see each pixel. Let's move on to the next one, underwater. This sounds like it's gonna be animated. Let's see. Okay, you can see the reflections here like if you were underwater. I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen. But they're shown here. You can see the sunlight. All right, so let's move on to the last effect here. Water, just going to restart this. And it looks just like that, just like water. It looks pretty amazing, to be honest. But that doesn't mean that I would use it. But again, kudos to all the people that create these shader files. It's amazing work. All right, so we went through all the files. I'm just going to comment this. The one that I normally use is this Bloom 025. I'm just going to restart this. Where do you find these files? Well, they're in my dot files now. So if you go to my dot files, you will be able to find all of it there. And where did I get them from? I got them from this repo, Ghosty Shaders. So if I come here, GX, and open in my browser, and these are all the different files. So the only thing that I did was just to copy them to my dot files. I'm gonna go to my dot files here. I have the tab on the top. If you like what you find in my dot files, all of my configuration is there. Make sure, like it says here, to star them. And you can do that here on the star button in GitHub. So you can see here the path for this file, for example. On the right hand side, you will notice that this is the path in the dot files latest directory in the ghosty folder. And here is the name of the file. It's just config. So if I open mini dot files, you're gonna notice that the file is here and the shaders directory is here and all the shaders are inside. This one is empty. I'm just gonna delete this folder, sync the changes, type Y to save those changes. If you wanna know more about this file manager that I'm using inside Neobim, it's called mini dot files. It allows you to do a lot of advanced stuff. I configured some key maps to grab a directory zip it and copy it to the system clipboard. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Go and check this video out. All right, so I already showed you where the files are, where my dot files are. This is my configuration file. I have a lot of comments in this file, so I would highly recommend you to go and check it out. I don't have much going on in my config. I'm using a custom theme. Notice that I'm calling that theme from here. Shaders, I just use one of them and uh, the rest is just standard stuff. I open Tmux as soon as I open Ghosty because I use Tmux basically all the time on any terminal emulator. I have some padding stuff here. The font that I use, you can see it here above and the size. The title bar, I don't like to have it. I don't use tabs. I'm against tabs in the terminal. 
I don't like to be asked if I want to close or not. I don't like to have a confirmation. If I close it, I just want it to be closed because I use Tmux Resurrect. And if we scroll down here a little bit more, you're going to find all the different options that I have. Notice as well that there is syntax highlighting here in NeoBIM for this file because you can see the key, one color, and the value of a different color. A user in Discord let me know about it. So if we open this ghosty.lua file, I can open it directly here from Telescope. I'm just going to look for ghosty.lua. Here's the file. This is all you need to add. The files needed are part of the ghosty application itself. So just make sure you add this and that'll take care of it. If you want to know where I found out about this. Here's the link to the Discord chat. So I already showed you my configuration. Just going to mark this. Syntax highlighting, we went over that already as well. I've been using Ghosty for two months. It's my default terminal emulator. If you want to learn how I set it up, if you want me to go over more in detail, go and check this video out. And I explain my configuration basically there and how to set it up. Notice that I have this installed GLSL tree sitter and also about this GLSL analyzer. What do I mean by this? If we come back here to one of the files, let's open one of the shader files. So if I open mini that files here, go to shaders, and I'm going to open this bloom. You're going to notice that it has syntax highlighting enabled. What is syntax highlighting? Basically just the colors. So in case that you're planning on editing these files, I would recommend you to add this GLSL to tree sitter. Let me open tree sitter. I think I have it open. No, I don't. So let's see tree sitter that little file. And uh, here it is. There's also an LSP. If we open Mason, you're going to notice that if I search here for GLSL, GLSL analyzer, notice that it provides autocompletes, go to definition formatter and more in case that you're going to be playing around with these files and that you use NeoBIM. What do you think about shaders? Do you like them? Would you use them? And if you would use them, which one and why? Or maybe you hate them? Let me know down in the comments. I'd like to hear more. Okay, so I covered basically all of the items. If you have questions, remember, leave them down in the comments. I hope this video was useful and I'll see you in the next video.